Hey everyone, this is a little time filler project in class. If students have a little extra time on their hands, or maybe if I have uh, some real sweet uh, kids who need some extra help from aides, this is a nice little project for them to work on as well. And that is making a little river stone looking um, uh, pieces with a word of encouragement, maybe their name carved in it, and then this particular one is finished with iron oxide. This one has been bisque fired, so it doesn't have the oxide on it yet. Uh, when I do the oxide, it'll look a little bit more natural, like that kind of a stone look. And then these are the two that I did in the video. They are leather hard right now. I show both carving and stamping how you can use either of those to kind of create your message or your name, that sort of thing. When making a thematic stone, one of the key things to remember is the thickness really shouldn't exceed three quarters of an inch in thickness unless you are going to add some vent holes to it to allow some of the moisture to escape. So I'm first of all just going to kind of take my fingers and kind of sculpt this. I'm trying to make this look round like a river stone. So I'm trying to really smooth it and round it all the way around. This is something that um, Kids might enjoy if they like just kind of gently feeling the clay. If they have um, some sensory issues, they might be squishing it quite a bit. So um, if adults can help with this, that's great. So I'm just rounding it to try to keep the backside really smooth and round again. So it's going to be more like a river stone. So now I'm just going to press it and flatten it so it looks more like a stone that's been rounded in by the flowing water in a stream or a river. And again, it doesn't really have sharp edges to it. I don't have corners. It's all rounded. Now the word that you put on there might determine the actual form of the stone. If you have a real long word, maybe you want to have a long skinny stone. If you have a short word, it could be more of a, a chubby fat stone and you could write it larger. Now, once I pretty much get it looking good with my fingers, then I can take one of the soft red ribs and then I'm just going to round over everything. That will help to get rid of the finger denting that I might have. And just keep cleaning off the edge of the uh, rib as you do it. I, I do have a few little uh, like imperfections. I'm just wetting my fingers to kind of soften those imperfections because it is easier to clean the imperfections right now before I get it leather hard. There we go. If you don't have one of these soft ribs, um, sometimes you can use like a, a flexible cr credit card or a uh, like a hotel key if it's somewhat flexible. I even cut um, hotel keys to match this design of this little red rib. And that looks pretty good. So this is ready to sit aside and to get leather hard. Uh, if you have a, a damp box to put it in, you could if you have the lid propped. If you're putting it on a wear board, maybe you put a towel over it. Or if it's in a damp cabinet, sometimes it can just go on a wear board and be uncovered for the night. And lastly, the water is to get some of the uh, imperfections off from when I ribbed. Maybe I have a little accumulation of clay. All right, and again, I'll set that aside to get it leather hard. Now, once you have your stones in the leather hard state and they are, um, they are smoothed and everything, you can go ahead and add whatever word you want to. Um, I have carved in mine in the past, but you could also stamp. Uh, my stamps aren't that large, but you could certainly use stamps if you want. Now, mine are uh, just 
deep enough that I think they should come out pretty good. I just want to make sure they're lined up. I need to do one other thing on this besides the fact that I need to identify it on the back. Um, because it's thicker than three quarters of an inch, I'm going to put some vent holes. And if I just make a single hole in the center, I can then angle out multiple holes that angle from that little hole. So it has a channel through which the uh, air can escape. And then I can write my initials and things on there or my name. Now on this one, I'm going to go ahead and uh, carve it, but first I'm going to write down uh, real lightly what I want it to say. So I'm going to say the same thing. So I wrote it lightly, but this is not clean. So the way to make a clean line is I like to use the uh, little triangle tip tool and I'm just going to carve it away because when you carve it away with the triangle tip tool you're left with a clean line that requires very little if any cleaning. Now I want the lines deep enough so when I go to add either oxide or glaze it will show up and it'll stay in there. So there we go. There is joy. And again, the cleaning of that is super simple with a small paintbrush. Small paintbrush, water, that'll smooth out any lines. The um, pencil or the, the paintbrush lines are not really a problem because when you glaze or oxide, you don't notice paintbrush lines. You just want to make sure that the burrs get taken care of because burrs even though they're soft now, they would end up by being quite sharp after it fires. And I'll also do the vent hole on the back for this because I do have some thick areas. It exceeds the three quarters of an inch in thickness. And then I would write my name on it. So in order to finish this stone, like I did with this, I'm going to put black iron oxide on it and I'm going to uh, fire it to cone six. I'm going to use a paintbrush, but I will rinse it first. This helps to condition the brush so uh, it, it doesn't completely saturate the brush with the oxide, but it gets water in there first. And then I'm going to put the oxide over it now, I don't feel like I need to cover the entire thing, but I definitely wanted it into the grooves. And then I'm going to take one of my sponges, which is dedicated to the iron oxide because they're really gross. And then I'm going to rinse this out. It was, it was dry, so I need to get it nice and saturated. And I'm going to rinse out some of the oxide that clearly one of my students to bring it out. Okay. And then with it squeezed out and then just going to take this oops I'm going to take this and I'm going to just kind of rub the oxide around because I do want to get the staining of the oxide throughout the whole thing if I wanted a little bit more in my initials on the back I can add a little bit more um, it's nice not to have to like saturate the entire thing if you can avoid it as long as you're getting the look that you want. Now it's very smeary so I'm going to rinse this out. It's very very messy very smeary so you rinse that sponge out so it looks a little bit better and then you're going to wipe it again and you just kind of rotate the sponge around to a clean area and the whole idea is it's definitely going to look a lot less smeary. Now, it does look grayish, but that grayish is going to translate as kind of a, a brownish when I fire it. So this will then get fired to cone six. This can have a kiln ticket placed with it in the cabinet, and I know that I will fire it to cone six. And it's probably obvious, but when you are washing out that oxide brush, please do use a little bit of the soap when you do that because that oxide is stubborn and you want to get it out of there. 
if you have oxide on your hands, really you can scrub it with the nail brushes and that will help to get the oxide out of your fingers, especially if you have dry skin, like I have dry skin, it really gets in there, but that'll help quite a bit.